We've been talking this afternoon about the immediate impact of the president's remarks yesterday. But what about looking ahead to 2014 midterm elections? The New York Times' Nate Silver was out this week with another forecast. He says that Republicans will pick up five or six Senate seats in next year's midterm elections, which would get them to about 50 or 51, just enough to overcome Vice President Biden's tie-breaking vote. Now, Silver has been spot on in past elections, but I have a little experience with elections myself. And these same predictions were made by pundits around this exact same time in the 2006 midterms, and that ended up being a thumping for Republicans. So with so many important issues at stake, including women's rights, voting rights, race, gun, uh, gun safety issues, will the turnout next year be enough to rebuff the predictions once again and bring out the Obama electorate that we saw in 2008 and 2012? Joining me now, Democratic pollster Margie O'Mara and CNBC's chief Washington correspondent John Harwood. Thanks to you both for being here. Thanks. Hey, Thanks for having me, and congrats again on uh, the fantastic show. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, Margie, I want to start with you. Talk a little bit about what you're tracking, because, you know, one of the things that, that struck me when I read Nate's piece is that, you know, there are the, there's the reading of the numbers, and then there's the reading of, you know, the emotions and the intensity of what people are feeling. So what are you seeing right now in terms of that 2014 electorate? Well, there are a few things that I think, I mean, look, there are some challenges in that uh, pre off year midterm elections are not quite like presidential elections in terms of the composition of the electorate. But I think it's important to look at some of the trends and how 2010 compared to 2006. Uh, because 2010 obviously was not a good year for Democrats. Um, but the racial makeup, the percent that were African American, the percent that were Latino, the percent that were under 30, that was actually unchanged from 2006. The real difference was in how independents behaved and the slight difference in the party breakout. So there's more to thinking about 2014 than simply laying it on the feet of uh, lapsed presidential uh, voters. It's also sure. looking at which party is really uh, has control of the narrative and which party looks like they are moving in the right direction. And Republicans continue to be net unfavorable, more unfavorable than, uh, than views toward Democrats consistently. And you have Republicans across the board really not able to do this autopsy that they said they right. were going to do after the election. Because <laughs> it was more than just changing the pizza box of people have been saying it's really about you know changing their policies in the sense that they care about the whole country and Carl Rowe even had a write in the Wall Street Journal we shouldn't just be the party for white people if that's right. you know if that's something that he so has to be written that's a sign of a party that's really kind of uh, you know losing its way in terms of trying to expand their base you know John so to, to this point and I know you wrote earlier this year that you didn't think that this could be what we would call in politics a wave election where you know again some of these issues actually change the competition position and the size of the electorate in 2014. But if we take a look at uh, r the record African-American turnout we had in 2012, and I want to look specifically at North Carolina because it's a pretty, it's interesting what's going on there. You had close to 80 percent turnout among African-Americans, 66 percent among women. Now, those demographics, granted, those, these, some of these folks are people who don't turn out in a midterm, but these are also folks who are at this point uh, becoming m more uh, motivated, if you will, by some of the things that we're seeing happen at the state level with regard to uh, a woman's right to make her own decisions about her health care and, and with regard to the Voting Rights Act. So how do we think that could shape 2014? Well, to the extent that Democrats can generate uh, uh, energy, especially around social issues, that's going to help. You can see them trying to do that right now in the Virginia governor's race. But I think the reason why this isn't going to be a wave election is because each side's got some things working in their favor. Republicans have got a very good map. They've got uh, seats uh, open in states that are very good for them. They have the fact that intensity in a, an off-year election tends to be with the party that is uh, out of power of the White House. The things that are working, the other thing they have working for them is the fact that, as you guys were just discussing, that an off-year election doesn't, uh, electorate doesn't look like the presidential electorate, especially with some of the voters, African-American, Hispanic, who turned out, young people who turned out very heavily for President Obama. What's but, working for the Democrats is you have the economy uh, is improving, so that helps the president and therefore helps his party. Secondly, you've got the Republican brand is way underwater still. Right. And third, you've got continued Democrats 
demographic change, which blunts the extent to which you've got to fall off in the electorate from presidential to non-presidential. Eventually, those demographic trends wash through the off-year electorate as well as presidential, uh, but uh, just not with the same kind of scale. So I'm going to make a prediction that if Democrats actually would spend their money on turning out these voters and changing the electorate of 2014, we might actually see Democrats do well. I want to thank you, Margie O'Meara and John Harwood. We have to leave it there. That does it for me. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, don't go anywhere because The Ed Show is coming up next.